Hey YouTube, it's your boy Savvy Got Bands, back with another reaction, back with a craziness once again. So if y'all new, hit the subscribe, my like, comment, number below, follow my Twitter, I draw that stuff. Look, this is a different channel, but y'all know about this channel too, so I'm going to put the link in the bio anyways. But look, this is a crazy one. I didn't even know about this. But yeah, I'm finna get tapped in. If y'all new, subscribe, like, comment. Let's see what's going Braver on. Braver man bro. who ran his organized crime network in Sweden. Yo, is bro from Holland too? Let me know down below in the comments. Is bro actually from the Netherlands? Because I'll be staying out there. Let me know. That That's crazy. Like they do in the Sicilian Mafia, with an iron fist and well organized. He did not joke around. To give you an example, one of his leaked PGP messages revealed that he had said, Brother, make sure those who have not done their duty are punished. We are an army, and in an army, the commander has to punish and reward his soldiers. Otherwise, there will never be discipline. Together with his network... Bro, I was saying it. If y'all was watching my previous rea my previous reactions... Yeah, I said that right. I was saying that the Sweden stuff be going so, like, a network. The network just be going crazy. It's, like, so well organized. I was saying it, like, a few months ago. I swear. I swear I was seeing the same stuff. He would go on to rule over the area and... I didn't say mafia though, but it kind of makes sense. But I was seeing the structure there, like the boss and then everybody just doing what the boss says. Everybody working together. I was saying it, bro. I swear I was. ...their money by selling narcotics. But then he got into a relentless feud with someone he had known for a long time. Over the years, both men would become obsessed with eliminating each other and in a conflict that would see countless victims, one of which an innocent 12-year-old. This is the story of Shihab Lamuri and his Varbi network. Mm. Shihab Lamuri is a Swedish-Moroccan man who grew up in the Varbi area southwest of Stockholm in Sweden. From the 2010s onwards, he was deemed to be the leader of the Varbi network. According to the police, about 15 to 20 people were a member of the network, Many, if not all of them, had previous run-ins with the police and were convicted for crimes such as theft, serious violent offences, and drug and weapon violations. The Varbi network has had several good standings with other networks, such as the Hagsatra network, Dalen network, and the Shotas. However, mm, I know about them. they I also know about had them. a very big enemy, but we'll get to that later. As opposed to other Swedish networks that operate without- I ain't even gonna lie. I'm, I'm so tapped in. I know about everybody at this point. At this point, I know about everybody. And stay inside too. Just stay inside. A relatively clear structure or hierarchy, Shihab organized his group very well. According to the police, his network structure was similar to that of the US Mafia with a Sicilian background. At the top, there was one sole leader, Shihab. Directly under him were four people whom the police called captains. These were either relatives or people that Shihab deemed useful and trustworthy. Below them were the captains in the field who took care of stashes and weapons. Lastly, there were the soldiers. Oh, no, that's crazy. Look at this higher art. No, this is crazy. Also known as the errand boys. These guys did all the dirty work. Oh and an intriguing detail is that members of the network. Garnier Vitamine C, Dag and Nacht Serum. Please do not skip my ads, please. I said, please, look, I got to skip him. Y'all know, y'all know, I got to skip him because we got a show to run. But please, don't be skipping my ads, please. Network please. had to pay a monthly membership fee I of 3,000 kroner, about 250 euros. Mm. This money was used for weaponry, amongst other things. Despite being responsible for all the deals, Shihab never had any physical involvement with the weapons being bought drugs being sold, or payments being received. He had organized that all to run through his lower ranks, keeping him safely at bay away from these prohibited items. Shihab also instilled in every one of his members that they had to keep a low profile because this would be beneficial for them in the long run. He was adamant in not grabbing the police's unwanted attention. But how do you keep a low profile if you're in the middle of a oh heated feud with one of your former friends? Oh it is a recipe God. for a police investigation. That was crazy. That, that, that was crazy. That this was former crazy. friend of Shihab was called Michael Yokana. Both men grew up in the same area. The two men got introduced to organized crime at a young age as it was becoming more prevalent in the neighborhood. They got themselves involved in the drug trade and used Varbi as their turf to sell on. What exactly caused them to be sworn enemies remains unclear, 
Police have always been uncertain about the start of the conflict, but describe it as a power struggle for turf in Varbi. This struggle for power led to Michael getting shot in a stairwell in 2011. After this incident, there seemed to be no turning back. Shihab wasn't going to let Michael take his turf and vice versa. A battle spanning several years ensued. According to the police, Shihab forced Michael out in 2015 and won the battle for Varbi. Michael packed his bags and settled in Vasteras. Michael, they packed you up? They sent you away, Michael? That's crazy. But the feud was far from over. On the 28th of January... Tw what? I thought it was... So he moved and they still beefing? So the beef never dies down? That's what y'all tell me? In a man named Regen Raza was taken out. Let me take it back. Wait, wait, wait. 28th of January 2017, a man named Regen Raza was taken out. He was considered to be Shihab's chauffeur and was an aspiring kickboxer. In a desperate attempt, Shihab and Hamo Budagian brought him to the hospital, but it was already too late. It was immediately suspected that Michael was behind this hit. Retaliation followed shortly after when the suspected shooter of Regen was taken out himself on the 1st of February 2017. The man was named Oliver. The suspects were Rodi Selik and Peyman Sehab. According to the police reports, it remains unclear whether this had to do with Shihab and Michael or if this was related to something else. The opinions vary on this incident. Then something devastating happened on the 21st of October 2018. In the evening, Shayan and his cousin Dia visited a restaurant to eat, talk and have a good time with each other. 22-year-old Shayan studied to become a teacher and worked at a pharmacy. He aspired to help the local youth stay on track. Oh my god, oh my god. Don't tell me something finna happen, bro. And the way these YouTube documentaries be going, I know where this about to go. Come on. Come on. And studied to become a teacher and worked at a pharmacy. He aspired to help the local youth stay on track and out of Positivity only. Bro was doing positivity. Po Come on. Shayan had to work the next day, so they decided to leave the restaurant at around 11 p.m. Yeah. Suddenly, a man on a scooter drove past and opened fire. Shayan was rushed to the hospital, but it was too late. After further investigation, police confirmed Mistaken. that Shayan was not the intended target. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. He had god. nothing to do with any criminality, he just happened to look similar to- I was just about to say that. I was just about to say he just looked like bro. That is crazy. Yo, that is my fear, bro. That is like my biggest fear. Somebody just randomly do something to you because you look just like bro. That's crazy. That is crazy. The man they were really after, a man named Ahmed. This was later discussed via Snapchat by someone involved. The police found the scooter and the weapon used during the attack and linked these to Varbi network member Hamo Budagian. He was sentenced to 18 years in prison. Oh my God. Just three weeks later, the job was finished after all. Ahmed was taken out while he was sat in a car with someone else. Both men did not survive. The other man was not- Bro, Ahmed, why you ain't move? Why you ain't move? Why, why you ain't move? Is it that hard to move out? Nah, because I be seeing that all the time. I be seeing they, go, they be going out of the country like, bow. So why, why Ahmed ain't move? The feud and most likely just became collateral damage for the shooter. Tensions between Shihab and Michael kept rising after every attack. Fast forward to August 2019, Monir, an associate of Michael, got severely beat up. He told police that the suspects were Shihab and his brother Shwaib. However, police had to stop their investigation as Monir did not cooperate any longer. Bro, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, stop it, stop it. Yo, you started snitching already! You started snitching already! You started snitching already! What? What? What's, what's going on? What? Come on, come on. <laughs> you you felt like they asking too much now? Now they asking too much? No, you already said a few names. You already said a few names. Snitch on your homies now. Now you don't want to snitch on your homie. No, you snitch on everybody. How you mean you don't want to cooperate no more? This guy. 
However, police had to stop their investigation this as Monir did not want to cooperate any longer. Just a day later, I be telling y'all stay inside. I do be saying that all the, all the time, stay inside. Monir and Michael were arrested after a short police chase. Upon investigation of the car, their GPS revealed that the two were headed to Varbi and had items in the car that indicated preparation. No, but they caught you red-handed. It's crazy. It's crazy when they catch you red-handed. It's crazy. for a violent crime, most likely targeted towards Shihab and his network. The attack may have been prevented at that moment, but at the far end of October, two associates of Shihab were fired at. No one got hurt, but they all knew where it was coming from. You can probably guess what will come next. It led to the retaliation from Shihab's side. On the 29th of November, Monir Jafer and one other person were shot at, while they were driving in their car around 8 p.m. Oh that God. evening. They attempted to drive off, but eventually crashed into a tree. Monir and the other man were severely injured. At this point, it seems like it will never end. Well, I can tell you. Tell me why, tell, tell me why. Look, my apologies, my apologies, but I gotta skip them. Usually, in my own time, I don't be skipping ads, but we record you. Tell you, to. it will only get worse from here. After the incident, police conducted a thorough investigation on the crime scene. That same evening, police arrested seven young men on the suspicion of being involved in the hit some way or another. A resident photographed two out of the seven men who were allegedly directly involved in the hit. Mm. They were just 16 and 17 years old. It had gone blow for blow for a while now in this feud, yet, both of the leaders remained unharmed. On the 18th of January, 2020, Shihab ordered for it to be finally over. He wanted Michael gone for good. Michael was sat in a car with his girlfriend and a friend of his near a gas station when, out of nowhere, a car with two men drove up and started firing. After firing 26 shots, the car drove off at a high speed, fleeing the scene. Was this the end? No, was it's not. No, it's not. And I got a question. I got a question too. Did you like this up, bro? And if I'm new to your YouTube subscription or that, did you sub? Hmm. Did you sub? Did you leave a like? I'm waiting. I can wait. I appreciate it. They're finally a winner Thank after you. all the attacks going back and forth. Well, instead of striking their intended target, the men hit everything but Michael. His did not survive the attack and the girlfriend was seriously injured. Shortly after the incident, Jonas El Kurari was arrested, though it was determined that he was only the driver. He still got sentenced to 17 years and oh 10 months. God. Word on the street was that both men were so obsessed with eliminating each other that it became their most important goal. Shihab made it harder for Michael by moving abroad to Spain in January 2020, though it wasn't over yet. A very quick message, I've been getting a lot of comments saying that my channel is really underrated. I did some digging and noticed that only 15.1% of all- Yeah, y'all, y'all scandalous. Some of y'all are scandalous. Come on, please. Can y'all sub and leave a like? I really appreciate it. Thank you. All viewers are subscribed. I really hate to ask, but if you haven't already, please take a moment to subscribe to my channel and help me towards my dream of 100,000 subscribers. It takes a second and immensely helps the channel and allows me to keep on posting. Tell him, tell him, tell him. Because look, I want to grow. I want to grow. Some of y'all want to see me do um live streams. I want to do that too. Some of y'all want to see me do vlogs, Amsterdam vlogs. I want to do that. But some of y'all don't want to sub. That's crazy. Some of y'all don't want to leave a like. That is crazy. That's that's crazy. I appreciate it. And these high-quality videos for you to enjoy. Let's get back into it. Yeah, let's go. In the summer... And is bro actually to from keep the on Netherlands? That's my other question, bro. I asked that at the beginning. Because it's Holland Boulevard something something. Is he actually from the Netherlands? Seeing these high-quality videos for you to enjoy. Let's get back into it. In the summer of 2020, Swedish police raided a money exchange office called World Exchange in Södermalm, Stockholm. 15 million kroner, approximately 1.3 million euros, was found hidden in several places in large duffel bags. It took a sniffer dog to find every. I appreciate the conversion too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Rose was found hidden in several places in large duffel bags. It took a sniffer dog to find everything. 
that's how good it was hidden. The owner of the exchange office was a man in his 50s. According to the indictment, he continuously made arrangements for the turnover of cash with representatives of 16 different criminal networks and persons. He preferably communicated via encrypted phones. They estimated that at least 200 million kroner, nearly 17 million euros of illicit earned money went through his hands in the last few years. This investigation started off after serious suspicion about the exchange office being involved in underworld banking. On a sunny day in May 2020, an 18-year-old boy entered the World Exchange Office. He was there to pick up a large amount of money. After he received the money from the owner, he exited the office and left the area. What he didn't know was that the police filmed the meeting with a hidden camera from across the street. They identified the 18-year-old as a soldier of Shihab Lamouri. Just like that, Shihab Lamouri and his network appeared on the radar as an organization that gladly used the exchange office. Further investigation showed that he frequently used the exchange office to deposit and withdraw money, launder his money, and send his money to countries such as Morocco and Tunisia. On the 1st of August 2020, disaster would strike again. At almost 11pm, Michael's associate Benjamin Mahdi sent a message to Michael that he had seen two members of the Varbi network in the city centre of Stockholm. They proceeded to communicate about whether there was enough time to bring weapons before the two members could potentially leave. The men chat back and forth and agree that this could be a great opportunity to dish out an attack. They decide to go through with their plans. Just past midnight, Michael, Benjamin and Hassan met up. Meanwhile, the Varbi network members arrived at the McDonald's in Norsborg for a quick stop. Michael, Benjamin and Hassan drove to the McDonald's in a white Audi with false number plates, unaware that the three Varbi network members had just left. There were only two other men left who were part of another criminal group that were allies of the Varbi network. A hail of bullets is fired from the Audi onto the unsuspecting targets. They managed to survive the brazen attack, though this was not the case for a 12-year-old Adriana. That's crazy. She was at the wrong place at the wrong time. Meanwhile, Michael Benjamin Bro, I never understood why she was there. That that's crazy. Hassan got rid of the Audi and their weapons, but there was still enough evidence to have them arrested. This happened at night, right? I always was wondering why was she there? Just PGP messages All and right, the clip geez. of Michael in the same Audi pointing firearms. This incident shocked Sweden. All three men got life sentences. Mm. Would this horrific incident finally be the end of this feud? Well, not directly, but while all this was going on, a worldwide police task force managed to obtain access to the- Was that the first time y'all saw that? Three life sentences? That's crazy. ...scripted messaging platform, EncroChat. After obtaining access... Wait, 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 take it back, take it back. ...obtain access to the encrypted messaging platform, EncroChat. After obtaining access, they were able to read each and every message sent by users via their PGP phones. Some of these users were Shihab and his network. Police were able to read all his messages and build a strong case against him. They were aware that Shihab fled abroad to Spain and issued an international arrest warrant. In September 2020, Shihab was arrested. The EncroChat messages really got the ball rolling and led to a ton of arrests. In total, there were 31 people suspected of having leading roles or other connections. Ontdek het Garnier Power Duo voor een stralende. That EncroChat did some damage. That EncroChat, yeah, that's crazy. That is crazy, police. Connections. I be saying it, police be. Come on, they have access to everything. The Vardy Network. Crazy. It was a rare sighting that so many people of a network were arrested at once. It was celebrated as a very big win by the Swedish police. The case that was built I against Shihab and his co-defendants revealed some interesting information. They had used the homes of multiple women for them to stash their weapons and explosives at. One of them was a 68-year-old woman. In her bedroom, police found several firearms, silencers, grenades, and seven kilos of explosives. In PGP messages, the members of the network openly discussed picking up and delivering weapons to the woman's house. They also used the home of a 25-year-old woman. Her home served as a stash house for drugs. Police were surprised by the coke found in the home as it was of very high quality, with a 97% purity. Shihab paid the woman's rent and expenses to use her home as a stash house. Another 25-year-old woman called Madame by the members also offered her home as a stash house. Police found drugs as well as weapons in her closet. All in all, after a very long trial, Shihab was sentenced to 17 years and 10 months in prison for attempted hits, extortion. So are the women getting charges too? That's my question.
is they charging the women too or the women just getting off because they was scared they had to do it let me know what's going on with the with the ladies was sentenced to 17 years and 10 months in prison for attempted hits extortion kidnapping of a young rapper endangerment of the public three counts of serious weapons offenses money laundering and drug smuggling i can hear you think wait what kidnapping of a young rapper yes Shehab allegedly ordered the kidnapping of one of Sweden's big I wanted to say that but I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure. rappers called Einar in April of 2020. Two rival rappers, Haval and Yasin, were also involved in the plot. In October of 2021, Einar was taken out. An interesting detail is that a week after the hit, he was scheduled to testify against the Varbi network and others. Had Shehab also ordered the hit on him? This case is so extensive and intriguing that it deserves a separate video. All I can say is yeah, stay tuned. Yeah, yeah, facts, 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 facts. It deserves its own vid. Facts. <laughs> we'll be waiting. I swear we'll be waiting. Comment down below when it drops. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll react to it right away. Who knows? But we'll be waiting, though. Facts. After Shehab and his network were arrested, Varbi seemed to turn back to normal. Like I said, Police celebrated their win against the network, though it was only for a short time. New groups have already taken the spots they left behind, and it seems to be for the worse. These groups of young men are said to be more dangerous because they act unorganized and without a thought. For now, mm, she had the younger generation. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Yeah, these kids stay inside, please stay inside. These kids are ruthless. Remains behind bars for a long time. If you have enjoyed this video, please leave a like and comment sharing your thoughts. Please, can y'all leave a like, comment, subscribe too if you know. I appreciate it. But yeah, we out. If y'all want to see more of these, let me know down below in the comments. Because look, I do be enjoying these. The Sweden content be going crazy. At first, I didn't know it would go so crazy. Like, we'll keep doing these all the time. At first, I just found it interesting. And yeah, now we just doing it all the time. Because it's interesting, bro. I like it. Y'all love it. We'll keep doing it. But if y'all like this, though, hit the subscribe and like, comment, and follow my Twitter. I jot that stuff. And I'm out.